Hello, church. This is Pastor Paul, and I'd like to share with you a few thoughts to follow up from my sermon yesterday based on Colossians chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. And I'd like to begin by reading these two verses. The Apostle Paul wrote, Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He's always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he is working hard for you and for those at Laodicea and Heropolis. We call this message a new urgency, because in these two verses we see the urgency that Epaphras felt. He was wrestling in prayer, and he was working hard for the churches. The Apostle Paul tells us specifically here that he was wrestling in prayer that the believers would stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. You see, in the first century world, there were some teachers who came to these churches, and they were teaching unbiblical things about Jesus, about salvation, and about the Christian life. And Epaphras wanted the believers to remain firm in biblical truth. He brings up here this idea of the will of God. And when we look at the New Testament and what it teaches about the will of God, it teaches two things. First of all, in the New Testament, it teaches that the will of God is that we might recognize that the only way we can be reconciled with God and assured of eternal life in heaven is that we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we understand that we are sinners and that Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins and that it is only by grace through faith in Jesus and his work on the cross that we can be forgiven of our sins, reconciled with God, and guaranteed of eternal life. And secondly, the will of God refers to this idea of that when we believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that we are called to live for God's glory. We are called to honor him in our everyday lives as we surrender our time, talent, and treasure to his service. Furthermore, the Apostle Paul tells us that Epaphras is working hard for the church. What that means, as I shared yesterday, I believe, is three things. First of all, he was wrestling in prayer for the church. But secondly, he was working hard in evangelizing. Uh, he believed so firmly in his heart that it was only by grace through faith in Jesus that people could be saved, that he was out sharing the good news. Uh, he believed that these other teachings offered no hope at all. The only message that offered hope to them, the hope of eternal life to them, was the message of Jesus Christ. So he was working hard and evangelizing. Thirdly, I believe that working hard here refers to the idea of discipleship. In the Great Commission, we're called not just to evangelize, but to make disciples. What's a disciple? A disciple is someone who is a mature follower of Jesus Christ, uh, someone who recognizes that they, again, need to live their lives for God's glory. They need to surrender their time, talent, and treasure to God's service. So Epaphras was busy teaching believers that that's how they needed to live. So how are we to apply this message to our lives today? In every age, the church is confronted with false teachings, false unbiblical teachings that offer no hope. And our age is no different today, and I mentioned some of those false teachings yesterday that offer no hope at all. I believe the, uh, the Apostle Paul and Epaphras would challenge us that we need to be wrestling in prayer for one another, that we would remain grounded, that we would stand firm in the truth of God's word. So I'd encourage you today to consider faithfully praying for one another in the church. Each week, the ladies in the office put out a prayer sheet and that's a great way that we can be praying for one another. But I'd also consider you to get a church directory. And each day, pray for different people in the church. And pray again that we would stand firm in the truth of God's word. That we would recognize that it is only by grace through faith in Jesus that we are saved. And that we would recognize that we need to live for his glory. And secondly, I believe the Apostle Paul and Epaphras would challenge us to be working hard for the church. Not only do we need to be praying hard for the church, but we need to be evangelizing. 
We need to be asking God to show us who we need to be sharing the good news with. We need to be praying that God would give us the strength and courage to share the good news. And we need to pray that the people we share the good news with would receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And furthermore, as Epaphras was about the business of making disciples, we need to be about the business of making disciples. And there's two elements to that. First of all, each of us needs to be discipled. We need to have someone in our lives who can encourage us to become more fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. And as Christians, we need to be discipling someone else, encouraging them to become a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. So church, I trust that these words will be encouraging to you this week, and I pray that we would feel a new sense of urgency as Epaphras felt in his day, we, that we would feel that urgency in our day. The urgency that says that Jesus is the only way to be reconciled with God the Father. It's only by grace through faith in him that we can be guaranteed of eternal life. And that we would be fully convicted of that and that we would wrestle with God in prayer for one another. That we would be asking God who we can evangelize we would pray that God would help them to receive the good news and that we would be discipled and make disciples of others. So brothers and sisters in the church, have a great and blessed week. Bye.